Hi, welcome to the video. We're going to be covering how we can train a SBIRT model or a sentence transformer or sentence BERT model using the what is kind of like the original way of, of training these models or fine-tuning these models, which is using softmax loss. So let's start with just a, a quick overview of the, the training approach. Now, using the sort of softmax training approach is part of what we could call the natural language inference approach to fine-tuning these models. And of or, or within that sort of category of training, we have two approaches. We have softmax loss or softmax classification loss, which we're going to cover, and then we also have something called a multiple negatives ranking loss. Now, in reality, you probably wouldn't use softmax loss because it's just nowhere near as good as using the, the other uh, form of loss of multiple negatives ranking. I'm, I'm going to call it MNR from, from now on. So MNR is more effective, but softmax loss is sort of the original and that, that's why we're covering it here. So we're just going to go through it. We're not going to go... Um, into too much depth, I'm going to just kind of go through it very quickly. So when we're training these models, we can either use what is called a, a Siamese network or a triplet network. Now, what you can see right now is that a Siamese network. So we have almost like two copies of the, the same BERT. So they're like Siamese twins. And the idea is we would have two sentences, sentence A and sentence B, and we would feed both of those through our BERT model uh, and produce the token embeddings that we usually get from BERT. And then we use a, a pooling operation, so like a mean average pooling. And then from that, we get our sentence embedding in U and V. And what we would be doing is optimizing to try and get those sentence embeddings as close as possible for similar sentences. And then for dissimilar sentences, we want them to be as far away uh, from each other as possible. So that that's kind of like the, the start of the model, but it's not it's not the, the full model. We continue and what we're going to do is concatenate those two together. So u plus v here. And then we're also going to do this this other operation here. So we're going to take u and v and we're going to get the difference between them. So this is just a positive number here. We're, we're taking the, the magnitude here, these bars. So we're just getting a positive number, which is a difference between the two vectors. And we also concatenate that. And we create this big vector, which is u, v, and then we have u minus v at the end. And we, we take that vector, so that's what you can see over here, and we feed it into a, a, a very simple feed-forward neural network. Okay, so the feed-forward neural network, um, each one of these sentence embeddings, we're going to have the dimensionality of 768. So obviously the dimensionality or input dimension of our feed-forward neural network is 768 multiplied by three. And then the output are our three output activations here. Now, if you watched the last video or you read the last article, you will remember that we had three labels in our training data. So in our NLI training data, we had its entailment, neutral, and contradiction. So we have those sentence pairs and we're trying to classify, you know, are they relevant to each other or not? And then we have the true label over here. And, and then we just optimize using cross entropy loss, which is, is what you can see over here. The reason why this is called softmax loss is because there is a softmax function within the, the cross entropy loss function. 
So that that's the that's the process at, at high level. So let's jump in. We're going to first. Well, we're going, mainly going to focus on how we format our data to to put it into here, and then we're going to move on to how we actually train all of this using the sentence transformers library. That's going to be our main focus, uh, but we'll just very quickly I'll run through the code in PyTorch so you can just see how it works. And if you really want to dive into it, you can obviously just take a look at the code and, and figure out it's, it's not it's not hard to read. So let's uh, let's jump into it. Okay, so the, the first thing that we want to do, I've added a little note up here. This is just an explanation of what is in our data or the labels of our data. But we're going to have a look at our, our data anyway now. So I'm going to use the Hugging Face datasets library. So we're just going to import datasets. And we're actually using two different datasets. We're using the Stanford Natural Language Inference or SNLI dataset and also the multi-genre NLI dataset as well. So SNLI, we, uh, we just pull that in. So it's datasets, load dataset. And then it's called SNLI, and we want the, the training subset of that. So train. Um, it's also, sorry, not subset, split. And then we can have a look. What do we, what do we have inside the data? Okay, so we have the these three features. So these are you know columns, or you can you can call them columns if you want. Um, so we have the premise, hypothesis, and label. Now in those previous diagrams we saw, we saw sentence A, which is the premise, and uh, sentence B, which is the hypothesis, and then we we saw our labels at the end. So it's just it's just the same. Now, if you want to have a quick look at one of those, we just have this. So we just get um, what you can see here. So what label do we have here? We have label one. So we come up here. Uh, that's neutral. So the premise and the hypothesis could both be true, but they are not necessarily related. Uh, and then here you can see the person is jumping over a broken down airplane. The person is training his horse for the competition. So they could both be about the same topic, but it's not necessarily about the same. They don't infer each other. So if we maybe try and find one that is a contradiction or, or something else. Why did I spawn again? <laughs> okay, so this one is a contradiction. So a person on a horse jumps over a broken down airplane, uh, a person's at a diner ordering an omelette. So those two things aren't about the same topic. So they're a contradiction. Uh, and, then, and then the other one we have just, I think if I, Number two, we should find one. Uh, we have this one. So, a person on a horse jumps over a broken down airplane. A person is outdoors on a horse. So, this here would infer, sorry, this here, this premise infers this hypothesis. So, that's that's the data. Um, and like I said, we have two of those data sets we have SNLI and MNLI. So, MNLI. We we load it same way. So data sets load data set. Uh, it's from the glue data set, and then it's the subset is MNLI, and again we want to split to be equal to train. Okay, okay, and if we just have a look, we'll see very similar format, not exactly the same. So see we have premise, hypothesis, label, but then we also have this index. And we need to, to merge these two data sets. We need to reformat um, our MLI data set a little bit. So first thing we do, we write MLI and we want to remove uh, that column. So MLI remove uh, columns and we are doing IDS. Okay, and let's make sure it works. And we can see now we don't have that. And if we try and merge these, we still get an error, which is annoying, but it's, it's fine. So I'm going to call it dataset equals dataset dot concatenate to concatenate datasets. And we just pass them both as a list. So SMI, MLI, and we're going to get this error. 
Okay, so the, the schema, so the format of the data is different. Even though they both uh, contain the same columns, I think one of them has a, a slightly different format. Like one of them allows you to have nulls. In fact, it, it does say here, All right? So they both have slightly different formats. So uh, to fix that, we just want to change the schema of, of one of those data sets. And, and all we do for that is we, I'm going to change the SMI data set and say SMI uh, cast features. No, just cast maybe and MLI dot features here, right? Yeah, and then and then we can actually do this now. Okay, so now we have our data set. We can look and see. Okay, we have we now have nine hundred and forty-two, uh, well nine hundred and forty-three, basically thousand rows there. Now inside this data, we actually have some some rows that we don't want. So we should have the labels zero, one, and two, uh, which we you know we have up at the top here, zero, one, and two. Uh, but there's actually some some rows that have the label minus one, and all these are are just erroneous rows. We we don't actually want those in there. It's where where someone couldn't figure out what to actually um, rate that that sentence pair. So what we're going to do is just remove those. So right, data set equals data set and we're going to use filter and then we just write a lambda function this lambda function is going to select rows where the label value is not minus one so we're going to say false uh, if the, the label value so label uh, is equal to minus one. So we're going to filter those out. And then obviously we want to put else true to keep the, the other columns. Okay. Uh, so let's, let me just print it out and then we can, we can see, so we have 942.8 there. And here we have 942.0. So we've removed, I think it's like 700 uh, or so rows. So if we are, I mean, if, if we're using the sentence transformers way of training uh, the models this is pretty much all we have to do we there's one more step uh, that we we have to take uh, which is to convert um, the data into an input examples uh, or a list of input examples which we'll, we'll move on to in a, in a moment we won't, we won't cover it now i'm gonna gonna quickly just cover the other training approach using pytorch um but i mean it's it's quite complicated and at least when I was trained, using that approach and model was nowhere near as good as as, if, as when I trained it using sentence transformers. So you know I wouldn't recommend it, but you know if you're interested, this is this is how we do it. So let me switch over to that notebook. So if I if I come over here, and okay, we're gonna see it's basically doing the same thing. We're, we're loading the data sets and we come down. Now, is there a difference? So the difference here, uh, so we're importing the, the mainly the BERT tokenizer is what we're focusing on here. Uh, we come down and then here. So we're filtering, which is what we did before, nothing new there. Uh, but here we're doing something different. So here we're actually tokenizing our, our text, right? So we're using the this map. We're using this map function here we're tokenizing both the premise sentences and also the hypothesis sentences. And we, we get the input IDs and attention mask out of those. And if we have a look down here, we will see that this is what we end up with at the end there. So I've removed all the other, all the other features and all we have are the labels. And then we also have the input IDs and attention mask for both our premise or sentence A and also our hypothesis or sentence B. And then after that, we, we need to do this as well, this data set dot set format. And we, we use, because we're using PyTorch, we, we say into a, a torch format, okay? From there, we, you know, typical PyTorch stuff here. So we're setting up a data loader using batch size 16. That's what they use in the, the expert paper. And then if we come down, 
this is all just examples. So I'm actually going to go a little further down. Um, so to to here. Okay, so here I'm defining the. You remember before in that graph we had the we had the uh, we passed sentence A, sentence B. They went both went into the the BERT or the Siamese BERT, and then there was this pooling method, which took our token embeddings, which are uh, 512, 768 dimensional vectors, and compressed them into just a single 768 dimensional vector. That's what this function here does. Um, when we're using sentence transforms, we don't need to worry about this. Uh, sentence transform is the library, by the way, the framework. Um, that's probably a bit confusing. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, when I say sentence transformers or, or using sentence transformers, I mean the, the framework or library, which we're going to cover soon. Uh, but obviously, they're also the models. That's the name of the models. So here I'm I'm taking the, the mean pooling, so taking the average of those values and excluding values that are padded, which is, is why we're not just taking the average um, straight. We are removing those attention mass values. And uh, we go down, we move our device. So we check if we have a CUDA enabled GPU and move our model to it if we can. And then here, uh, these are the layers we use. So I told you before, we so we had that, um, well, we concatenate our U and V vectors, the sentence embeddings, and then we pass them to a feed forward neural network. And that feed forward neural network is the size of our um, size of our sentence embeddings multiplied by three and it outputs three uh, labels or classes and then we we also use a cross entropy loss function um, between what the feed forward neural network outputs and our actual labels so after that <laughs> you know this is why i mean there's there's quite a bit of code when you when you go to sort of like the very manual uh, PyTorch approach rather than using uh, the sentence transformers library. So here we're getting this get linear schedule with warm up. So that's just saying for the first 10% of our steps, we're going to warm up the, the learning rate. So we're not going to go full on like training at, at one at one e to the minus five straight away. We're going to um, warm it up a little bit. Now, in the expert paper, they use 2e to the minus 5. For me, it just kind of bounced around a lot, so I, I halved it. Um, but, you know, this is just... I mean, if you can get working with 2e to the minus 5, that's what they use in the paper, so it's probably better. And then they only train for one epoch as well. Um, and then also here I'm using the Adam with weight decay. And then this is the training loop. So uh, TQDM is just a progress bar. Uh, we do one epoch. We make sure our model is on training mode. Uh, we initialize a loop, which is going to you know, get all the batches from our the data loader. Um, and then we're just getting all the data out. This is just you know, PyTorch stuff. Uh, getting our U and V uh, sentence embeddings. Then here we're getting the, actually, sorry, so U and V here actually token embeddings. Uh, here we're converting them into sentence embeddings. And then we're getting the, the U, the absolute value or the difference vector. Here, concatenate it all together. So we're creating that, you know, that concatenated uh, vector that we then feed into the feed forward neural network. And then we optimize based on the loss here. And that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, and then we're saving the model down here. Okay, so yeah, that's that's how we train it in in PyTorch. You can see here I was using, I was, I was messing around, uh, seeing if I could see what happened if I did two epochs. It, it is better to just stick with one. Um, even though the loss was like, well, lower. Um, in the end, the, the performance wasn't any different. So I, I I would just I would train for one epoch. Okay, so let's let's go back to the code and we'll 
we'll work through the actual uh, training with sentence transformers, which is what I would recommend doing. Okay, so I said before we, we had the the list of input examples. So input example is just a data format uh, that sentence transformers library uses. So we, we just want to write from sentence transformers was import input example. Um, and then uh, all I'm going to do here is, is write from tqdm or from tqdm to auto. I want to import tqdm. So this is just for our progress bar. So we can see what is what is happening. Um, and then in here we just want to actually want to create our training examples first, or training samples, whichever you want to, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be empty list. And then we literally just fall through all of our training data, through our data set and extracting what we need from it, uh, which is just sentence A, sentence B and the label. So right, for row in, I'm gonna put TQDM train samples. So just adding TQDM in there so we have a, a progress bar so we can see what, where we are. Uh, all we need to do is write train samples that append input example and before I before you get confused this should be a data set not not train samples so data set is what we're looking through our, our data set right not not the not the empty list and then inside our input example we have two variables of text and labels so you have to pass your text which is the or the input text that you're going to process into your model so we go row premise and also row um, hypothesis so they're just our two features from the or the two text features from our data set and then here we also want a label so label is, is just row label it's just a just a feature names from our data set which you can you can still see up here now we process that, it can take a little bit of time, so I'm gonna take too long, unfortunately. Uh, and then from there, we, we need to, you remember before, or when we very quickly went through it, we had the PyTorch data loader. Uh, we also need a, a data loader here as well. Uh, sometimes you can use uh, special data loaders from the Sentence Transformers library, which are quite good. Uh, but for this, we're just using a normal PyTorch data loader. So we, we need to import Torch for that. Or we can just write from torch utils data import data later uh, same as the the paper we're using batch size of 16 and the data loader or loader is just data loader we we pass in those train samples specify our batch size and if you'd like to shuffle, which in this case we will, uh, you, you also put shuffle. So shuffle equals true. And that should should work, okay? So now we have our data loader. And, and what we do now is, well, initialize our model using sentence transformers. Now sentence transformers uh, uses modules to sort of set up the, the model. So we're gonna have a transformer module no, which I'll just do at BERT. And then we're also going to have a, a pooling module which for our mean pooling layer. So from sentence transformers, again, we're going to import models. And what is this one? A sentence transformer. Yeah. We initialize those two modules. So we have a, a BERT module. So models, transformer. And then here it's just, it's using the, the hugging face models. So we can put anything from hugging face on here. I'm gonna use BERT base in case. And then we also want our pooler. So our pooler models again, uh, pooler, pooling. And then we have BERT and we want to get the, the word embedding dimension so get word embedding dimension which is the the 768 of our 
of our token embeddings and, and then of course of our sentence embedding as well. And then we also want to set the, the type of pooling that we are going to do. So uh, pooling mode, you can see that we, we have these different ways of, of pooling. Uh, so we have CLS token, maximum. Uh, this, this one I've never actually seen use um, square root, the length, it's interesting. And then we also have this one. Uh, this is the, the mean pooling and we're going to use that. Okay, so that is, there are two modules and then we just want to initialize our model. So we write a sentence transformer. And what you can, you can do by the way, is this is how you would actually um, say you have a sentence transform model that you want to load. You would write the, the sentence transformer name in here. So like all MP net, whatever it's called. Uh, so you, you, you do that as well. Uh, but you can also load or initialize a model using the, the modules that we, we just initialized. So we write BERT followed by the pooler. And then you see details of that model in there. Okay, so we can ignore that. So this bit here. So these are our, this is our sentence transformer like structure. You can, you can think of it as a structure. So our transformer, we're using BERT model, the maximum sequence length. And then in here we have pooler and we have the word embedding dimension that we'll expect. 768 and then you see here we have those different pooling modes and we are using pooling uh, mode mean tokens which is true the rest of my faults and then uh, from there so we we also need to uh, initialize our, our loss function which is pretty straightforward as well so again from sentence transformers i want to import losses and there are plenty of, uh, of different have losses that you can you can use you can just look on that documentation uh, or, but we're using softmax loss so what we want to do is write loss equals losses and we write softmax softmax loss and then in here so you think okay our loss function what does it need so we we pass in the model so it can, it can get the, well, the the model parameters from from that so first we do model equals model and then it also needs the the embedding dimension, so it's 768 again. Uh, so it, it needs on this sentence embedding dimension. Uh, and there we just want, uh, what do we, what is it? So the model gets embedding dimension again, uh, get sentence embedding dimension. Okay. And then we also need to pass, okay, how many labels are we going to have uh, in our model? Uh, we already know it's the number of labels. We already know it's three. Uh, I'm sure you can, you can get that dynamically from the from the data set if you want as well. Uh, but I'm just going to put three. And I think that's it. So we have our loss model and our data. So I think that's we should be okay to, to start training. So I'm going to say we, we go for, okay, one epoch. We want to say how many warm up steps do we want. So again, it's the ten percent warming up um, that we that we use. So we just want zero point one multiplied by the the length of our data set. So length of the data set. Yeah, and I'm just gonna we need that to be an integer value. So I'm just you know it's quite rough rounding very roughly there but that's fine and then we want to just start training our model so we write model.fit it's like tensorflow and we use a train objective so in here we need to pass a list um, which contains a single tuple which is our loader so the, the data loader and the loss so i think with this you can if you have multiple train objects, you can put like another loader, another loss, and, and keep going through there. That's why we have uh, a tuple within a list. Then you have your epochs, the number of warm up steps, 
uh, which is it's just warm-up steps again. So warm-up steps. Uh, we also need the what do we need output path. So where we're gonna where we're gonna save the model. Um, so I just put like expert. Uh, what do I call it? I think test B is is what I what I've called it uh, later on. And oh, last one is show progress bar. Now this is automatically true, uh, but when I when I was doing that, it just printed out loads of, of lines. It was printing to a new line every single update, so I just set to false. Um, so it wouldn't do that because it's obviously quite annoying. So yeah, that, that's how you train the model. I'm not going to do it again. I've already I've already done it. I've already you uh, train this expert test B model. So what I'm going to do is switch over to that notebook where I, where I trained it and show you those those results. Okay, so uh, this is a notebook. Uh, pretty much, you know what we've just covered. We're going through that again, uh, and then here. So we have the training, uh, the training time as well. Uh, something I didn't mention just now. Uh, it's one hour, 15 minutes for me on an RTX 3090. So, you know, reasonably fast. It depends on what you're, what you're training on. Um, but yeah, so it's, yeah, it's quick. Uh, and then, so I define these sentences, just a load of random sentences, uh, like complete nonsense. But some of them do align. Um, so see this one, one thinks uh, she saw her raw fish uh, and rice change position. And in this one, uh, seeing her sushi move, uh, weaving with spaghetti, and where is the other? Uh, knit with noodles, and dental specialist with construction materials, and the same again, uh, dentist with chewing bricks. So there's some that are kind of similar, but they're, they don't share any of the same descriptive words, uh, but you know that they, they are, um, you know, they kind of mean the same thing, you know, roundabouts. So um, with our model, so we have loaded the model here, uh, which we can just do. Uh, so if you if you've saved the model, which it it does automatically here, you just take this. You you take that. You come down here and you, you write sentence transformer and then in here you do that, right? And then you would put uh, you put that in the, the model variable, right? So that's, that's all I've done there. Um, so remove that. So loading the model, uh, I'm going to use it to encode those sentences, which is just in the list and create our embeddings, so these sentence embeddings. And then from there, what I'm doing is getting the cosine similarity. I'm again, using sentence transformers for that. This makes it a bit easier. And I'm just comparing all those sentences. So I'm just, you know, a very qualitative um, view on, you know, how these how these embeddings are doing. And you see that we get these these results here. So yeah, it's not it's not it's 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 pretty good actually. Um, like it's getting the right ones. So this seven and five, nine and one, and I think four and three are the ones that we wanted to get. And they are in fact the highest three rated um, scores. But a lot of these other uh, non-pairs are, are still rated kind of high. And like I said before, right? Softmax loss is not the the best way of training your model anymore, fine or fine tuning your model anymore. There's other ways like MNR loss. So let me show you some of the charts from MNR loss and you'll see see the difference. Okay, so we have uh, this one is is just for Bert. You see they're all very flat. It does actually get uh, almost it gets two of the correct answers within its sort of top three. Uh, but not all of them, but it's very flat. Like all the values are very near the same value, which makes it hard to, you know, differentiate between similar and not similar, which is, is not what we want. But obviously Bert hasn't been trained for this, so it's, you can't expect it. Um, and this is this is my PyTorch model. It's getting better than the, the Bert model, but the performance still isn't there compared to the Sentence Transformers trained model, uh, which is, 
not here. This is the the actual the one that they trained. That sentence on some of themselves. Uh, you can see there's you know a better differentiation between between all the values here. But then if we compare that to uh, so this is a an MNL model that I have uh, I've trained using the same you know sentence transformers we use sentence transformers here if we come down we see a big difference so these are our similar pairs and they you know they stick out so much more than they did with the other models everything else is very is scored very lowly uh, but these these stick out a lot and that's really the difference between between models like th this is much better because it separates those similar and, and dissimilar pairs uh, very well and it's just, it's just a, a lot more accurate right so that is the, i mean that's my mnr model as well the actual sentence transformers mnr models are much better than this but yeah i, I think that's pretty much it that's that's it for this video um so in the next one we are going to as you probably have, have guessed we're going to have a look at how we can use mnr loss or multiple negative ranking loss to to build a model uh, which i think personally is a lot more interesting um sentence uh, sorry softmax loss is pretty interesting but it's not particularly intuitive and even even the, the sentence uh, transformers authors the expert authors uh, said the same thing that's actually where i got it from it isn't very intuitive when you think about it. It's kind of hard to understand why it works uh, because we have that weird concatenation at the end and we're classifying and it seems strange. M and R loss it is much more intuitive and it, it makes a lot more sense. And I think it's more interesting and you get way better results with it. So we're going to cover that in the, in the next video. So I think that should be pretty interesting, but for now, that's it on, on Softmax loss. Um, Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been useful and I'll see you in the next one.